it was was a little thing but the players are like oh yeah kathy she gets us mm-hmm. um and then again in the process of negotiating uh, the one thing i said to our lawyers i said i the players need to be treated like they are professional working women in the workforce and here's all the things we had at Deloitte for our male and female employees. And I had just put in a 16 week, very progressive family leave policy uh, for men and women for any family issue, not just um, having a baby. So um, so I was like, you know, we're going to go heavy on parental things, mother stuff, fertility. You know, we're going to go heavy on all of the benefits that professional working women get in their day jobs because that's the, they just have these players just happen to be the best at their craft in the world. Um, and so, you know, it uh, it wasn't easy. It was hard. There were important things to the owners. Uh, probably the owners were a little nervous on the funding of all this, but now we're in such a different place where we're talking about a lot of other things. We tripled the pay of the top player. Top player can now make in their four and a half months or so with us, if everything went well, $700,000. And I think it was Ooh. probably a hundred and some when I first started. So not only did we triple the top uh, pay with bonuses, we're also putting over a million dollars of marketing into players, paying players to do marketing in the off season on behalf of the league. So we still have lots of things to transform, but I can't be more pleased three years later of how it's going. And Kathy, it was all important to build the trust with the players. You're kind of rattling these off because uh, be, it, these are this is huge. This is huge. <laughs> I mean, even backing up, talking about the healthcare support, that's uh, that's just massive. To, to in in the CBA you you supported players with um, egg freezing, yes. right? Yes. With, with fertility treatments. Yes. W- and then the the maternity leave and and the, and then you know when when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, you were right there with an announcement that the WNBA will support all healthcare travel and costs of of any woman who needs to go somewhere to take charge of her body. Yes. Yeah. Really important. Again, what women in the workforce get, these are professional working women. They happen to be professional athletes. They should get full maternity leave. They should get full benefits, fertility, motherhood benefits that I know I was a huge um, beneficiary of when I had my two kids. And then certainly, you know, when Roe v. Wade, uh, the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade came out. Uh, that was very important as, again, the longest tenured women's professional sports league in the country for us to be viewed as leaders and to really speak out and knowing how strong our players' voices have been in very difficult topics. It was important that they see a league that's leading on that as well. It's interesting. I, I think that women athletes, I'm thinking especially of the WNBA and um, the U.S. women's soccer team, they a lot of these athletes speak so much more unapologetically and vociferously than male athletes, than our, than, than the NFL, than the NBA. Um, they, 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 I feel like they're much more intrepid about their political stances. Yeah. And I, I think one of the reasons is, you know, they have fought for where they have gotten over so many years through, you know, again, an ecosystem that undervalues them. And so I think they know that they now have worked so hard to build a platform. And in the WNBA, um, obviously, we're extremely diverse, 80% women of color. And I think they know that they are viewed as leaders. They're the role models. If we want more girls and boys of color to rise in uh, whatever they end up doing, if they're not an athlete, they realize like you can't be what you can't see and that they're these huge role models and have this strong voice and strong platform. So, yeah. And I think you see the admiration they get from other professional athletes because they're so clear about their platform. And in 2020, you know, after George Floyd, Jacob Blake, when we launched our social justice council of the WNBA, I mean, that was a leading uh, and these important social, societal and political issues in our society that the players each year now since, and I told everyone in 2020, I know enough, these players are all college graduates. They, um, they're they really impressive. And the one thing I know is they're not one and done about anything they do. And, and yeah. you know, this year they're focused on, you know, civic engagement, how smart given that, you know, the Roe v. Wade and the other things, voting rights and things are 
uh, it's, it's up to us all to be more civically engaged in what our state and local legislators are, what the values are, so that when we go to the vote, go to vote, we're vote, we know what we're voting for. We know how that's going to impact us in our community. So again, so smart. I've been so impressed with that aspect. Last year, it was you know, um, to advocate for health equity, uh, particularly in communities of color. That was a focus last year coming off the pandemic or still in the pandemic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but think about that, like how smart they are and they know they can't boil the ocean. They're picking things that are important to them personally in their communities with our fans and, and certainly in society.